This is the number one podcast, whether you're looking to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Here at Future Flipper, we transform lives through real estate investing. And now, your host, Brian Davila. All right, guys. So today I'm interviewing someone very special. He is the man behind Ryan's real estate investment company. He runs the day to day. He's closing deals. He's hiring people. He's setting up systems. And his name is Sean Bob. How are you, Sean Bob? Hey, what's going on, Brian? <laughs> nice. Well, I wanted to have you on because, uh, like I mentioned, you are the man that is running the business. You are running the day to day. You are leading the company. So I wanted to get your opinion on how to build a multi-million dollar investment company and how are you guys adjusting to this market? That's like so many loaded questions. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just <laughs> Jesus. I'm giving you a heads up. Jesus. So I guess before we get before we get into building a multi-million dollar investment company, I want to know how did you start working with Ryan Pineda? Okay. Um I'd say the simple, easy way was I met him on a transaction where I'm also a licensed agent as well as working for Homeward Offer. I work for the brokerage he has right now called Real as well as I work for Pineda Capital. Okay. Um, so the cool thing is I met Ryan on a transaction. We mm -hmm. liked each other's style. We met in person about six months after the transaction. I helped him with an MLS deal. Mm -hmm. He opened a brokerage. I was the first agent. Oh. Um, fast forward... I would say probably six months after that, which was like 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I was probably one of the, me, Noel, were probably the first two employees that kind of started Homer Offer. Oh, okay. So, so back in the day. Okay. And then why go work with Ryan if he didn't have like a track record yet and you were a realtor? Um, I was, I'm saying just, I just want to learn about the whole like networking thing and not, or sorry, not networking. I wanted to learn the whole like investment side. Okay. And I'm saying that's something that my old broker wasn't teaching me. Oh, okay. So that was kind of the thing. I was like, hey, I'm going to beat Ryan. And, I, and I'm saying this is before obviously got big where people like now will like try to like mug him essentially <laughs> when he's in public. <laughs> but uh, I would say I met Ryan and I remember like bringing him my kid's birthday party like the first year after I met him. And like I remember like just hanging out with him a lot. I'm saying he was there like the day my kid was born, which kind of shit, which is awesome. Like, really? Like me and Ryan were, became really good friends, like fast tracked. Yeah. Which was awesome. Um. But I would say, like, with build it, I'm saying, what were we talking about? Sorry. You're meeting with you uh, when you met Ryan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I would say, like, I'm saying having, like, like no track record, I just believed in his vision. Okay. Like, I saw where he was like, hey, I'm fixing flipping, like, 50 properties. I'm like, man, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, also, when you, when you met him, he was already doing 50 properties. Yeah. At a time or a year? At a time. At a when, time? When I met him, he had bought 59 properties that first year. Whoa. And then the year after that was when he scaled to 100. By himself. By himself. That's but I'm saying this is also before Homer and Offer. So Homer and Offer, a lot of people think is just a fixed and flip company that Ryan owns, but it isn't. It's uh, Homer and Offer is actually um, a marketing department. So you have employees, I'm saying like any other business. We, we have sales people. We have closers. We have setters. We have mm -hmm. transaction coordinators. We have disposition managers sells, selling our deals. Mm -hmm. Um and that's just for the investment side. Yeah. Now, Homer and Offer also is the fix and flip company as well. Yeah. Um, so Homer and Offer is going to have our project managers that deal with all the contractors for mm -hmm. fixing and flipping and mm -hmm. realtors stuff like that. selling it. Yeah. Our realtors, obviously, Nick Devitt, if you guys know who that is. Yeah. Okay. So you met Ryan. You're like, whoa, this guy's flipping nine, 59 houses a year. When you started off, what was your role? So first started off, um, Ryan had met, a guy, met kids from church, basketball, I'm trying to think where else he met people from. Kind of those really random his, people. Yeah, random yeah. people. Those are like his kind of two networks that I met people from. So uh -huh. we had Mike Smith, who's also still working for Homer and Offer. Uh -huh. He went to church with Ryan. Um, yeah. Brian, RIP, uh, Bri Crystal. Crystal, yeah. I, I forget how to say Bri's last name, but Bri. Um, Dakota Barrick, another guy from church. Mm -hmm. It was just funny. Like some guys were from basketball. So yeah. it was just this hodgepodge of guys. And like, we were in this conference room with like maybe sit six people around the table and they were fighting like, Hey, quit kicking my foot on the table kind of thing. <laughs> and we were in just a small little office. Really? Yeah. Like eight by eight, there were six guys in there and like, they would ask me 
about real estate. So, and I was like the kind of the Experience knew a lot guy. more than them at yeah. the time. Yeah. And no actual proper sales training by any means. <laughs> and they were just literally, Ryan's like, hey, here's these lists of notes of defaults, super low hanging fruit. Yeah. They're like, okay, we'll call XYZ. And they were calling from their cell phones. Yeah. So they're getting phone calls at like eight o'clock at night, like, F you, what are you thinking calling me? Yeah. And I was the appointment guy. Oh, they, you were the sales guy. I was a sales guy. They were yeah. like, okay, we're going to do this. You're going to go on the appointment. And then while I was in the appointment, it was like a good cop, bad cop. I'd call Ryan and say, hey, this is where they're at. Hey, Sean Bob, offer them this. This is where they need to be. Yeah. Okay. If the, if the offer doesn't make sense, offer to list it because you're a realtor. Yeah. What about, um, so you were the sales guy. How was it, I guess, working with Ryan in the very beginning? Because he's changed over the years oh, yeah. for, the, for the better. For and, sure. You know, people change. I'm so. saying Ryan's just busy now. Um, yeah. Ryan's busy. I don't live near him in town anymore. But I'm saying when I first met Ryan, we live probably two, three miles from each other. Yeah. We would go to the gym three to five days a week with each other. Yeah. Obviously, we see each other at the office. We do breakfasts. But how was he as a leader? Like, because he, he came in as a baseball player. Yeah. He didn't know, you know, he was doing real estate, but I feel like now everything seems so easy because we've already done the trainings, the Gary Harpers, you know, yeah. all the sales training, all the admin training, all the marketing training. Like we know everything. Yeah. Back then you guys didn't know anything. No, not at all. I'm yeah. saying every, so you got to think, figure this every three to six months, Ryan would go some kind of mastermind. Yeah. So he say, for instance, he go to collective genius. Yeah. And he'd come back and like everything would be changed. Yeah. We're no longer Sean Bob, you're no longer the appointment guy. Yeah. Um, we're getting rid of the sales team. He still does that. Yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Any Anytime he goes to a mastermind, you're like, dude, I do not want to go yeah, back. Yeah. I, I'm going to call in sick that day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here's my notice. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. be coming that day. But uh, yeah. every time you do that, I'm saying it would be for the better, obviously. Yeah. Of He'd course, see yeah. a new vision. Yeah. And he'd say, hey, guys, here's what we're doing. So like the first time I remember he came back, um, we had a whole sales team and he's like basically forced everyone to quit. Yeah. He's like, quit or go somewhere else. Like figure this out kind of oh. thing. So like one guy moved to Texas and one guy we promoted to Smith. be our, uh, well, Smith was just a sales guy. So Smith uh -huh. stayed on. It was me and Smith that stayed on. Mm -hmm. Bry got promoted to front desk. Mm -hmm. um, Noel was already doing a bunch of admin stuff for Ryan. So I'm saying she was already like saved essentially from this like hodgepodge of group of people. Yeah. One guy like just went to college full time. I'm saying yeah. it was, it was kind of cool. Like, yeah. One guy, he's like, dude, you're just not good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> one guy went missing. Uh, never one, seen him again. He's still there. Yeah. He's, <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. Yeah. But I would say after that happened, then we, okay, here's what the guys in CG are doing. Here's where we need to get a call center. We need to get VAs. Yeah. We need to really implement this as a marketing channel. Got it. So every like collective genius he went to or mastermind, he was like, okay, here's the new, uh, basically marketing channel. So like cold calling came in, then it was like text blasting and like, yeah. Hey, Sean, Bob, you're basically the beta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's why I wanted to have you on. Cause you've literally been there from like almost day one. You were yeah. there like day two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing every position I've done. Yeah. So when someone tells me it's hard, I'm like, dude, I'm a natural sales guy. I'm probably not the best sales guy, Yeah. but I've done it. It's not hard. Yeah. If you do the system, that's all it is. Yeah. Just a system to follow. And that's what yeah. we teach at Future Flipper. That's why I feel yeah. like anyone can make it because if I can make it, a high school dropout, uneducated, illiterate, can copy what Ryan and you were doing and be successful, I feel like anyone could do it if yeah. they just follow the system. Yeah. But I would say the one cool thing about you, about you and everyone else on that first mastermind that Ryan did mm -hmm. is slowly those people are starting to try to work for us or apply to work for us. Yeah. So if you're yeah. watching this video and you're a sales guy and you want to be in Vegas or remote, uh, Sean, S-E-A-N at homeroffer.com. Here's my plug. <laughs> um, shoot me an email if you guys are interested in working for us. But yeah, from the first mastermind, which I think was you, this Zasha. guy named Zasha. No, oh, no, no, that was the second one. That was the second one. So I guess the second one, the second one's a little bit bigger where he brought in like, I was like the MLS guy at the time that he brought in. And yeah. he had his heart, he had his uh, private lender that came in. But anyways, um, I forgot I was tracking with this. You just said that we copied the sorry. Air systems. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, stuff. sorry, sorry. Yeah. So from that second mastermind, uh -huh. you work for Ryan. Yeah. Michael uh, Stevenson works for Ryan. Yep. This guy, Rudy, just reached out to me. Now he's, now yeah. we just hired him. He's about 100%. to work for Ryan. Yeah. 
this other guy named Mike, who the firefighter. Yeah. I just talked to him the other day. He's like, yeah, man, I quit my job. I didn't want to be a firefighter anymore. He I'm really looking for, for acquisitions. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, like, well, let me get you set. Let me get you set up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. If you're, if you're looking for a job, hit up, hit us up because we're hiring HROs right. hiring future flippers hiring, but all right. So you guys started from the bottom. Now you're here. What, what happened? How did you guys start scaling? Um, I would say, so the whole focus of home run offer is with how the market's shifting. Mm -hmm. And this was back in 18, 19. Ryan just couldn't really just buy off every wholesaler because I'm saying those weren't the spreads he needed. Mm -hmm. So obviously by a wholesaler, you're probably going to make about 20, 25 max on a property. Yeah. And I think the, I think in from like 2018 to 2019, we hit a low. Oh really? So the market dipped for us. It did. I'm saying it didn't correct or anything like that. Yeah. Like kind of what's going they on They raised now. interest rates back then. Yeah. Yeah. So I they, remember that. And then they dropped it right away. Cause yeah. It, Cause it didn't work. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, we had to have the more direct to seller approach. Okay. So we've had, um, I would say the biggest structure change for our business was probably in 2020. Kind of what you mentioned earlier, like Gary Harper came in our business. Yeah. Um, he took everyone other seats and it took everyone's like predictive index assessment and said, Hey, this is what you are naturally. You're naturally a salesperson. This is a role you should be in. Okay. That was in 2020? 2020, right before COVID hit. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's when you guys really like tightened everything up. Tightened everything up. Yeah. Got I would it. say before that, I'm saying we, we'd hire salespeople. Like I say, some of our longest employees is actually our project manager, Daniel. Yeah. He was a sales guy. He just worked for free. If you locked up a deal, he got paid. And, uh, Besides that, he'd also, um, after that, we we're like, hey, honestly, you're not a sales guy. So we took him out of the position. Yeah. We actually put him in the transaction coordinator position. Got it. And then from there, he loved it, but an opportunity arose and we needed someone for project management. Mm -hmm. And he talked to me, he talked to Ryan, and he's like, dude, I really want to do this position. I think, honestly, man, like, I think that's probably the best fit for you, which kind of what Gary had told us. Like, Gary's mm -hmm. like, hey, this is the guy that you need in each seat. Like, so for instance, Gary looked at me and said, Hey, Sean's good at sales. That's what his natural profile is. He's a captain, but he's also really good at being an integrator. Oh, really? Yeah. I so there's two kind of captains. I'm saying Gary, Gary kind of talks about, there's the captain that comes in and basically just make sure the ship is going straight. Okay. Or, and then the second captain, which is now I'm trying to develop myself into that one is I'm trying to be the proactive captain. So like I'm now diving deep into our new CRM called Salesforce, which is left main. Yeah. And I'm always looking at, okay, where are the holes in our system? Yeah. So the biggest thing of left main that we talk about is if it is in left main, it never happened. So if you what don't does that mean left main, what is so that? left main is just a build out of Salesforce. Uh, Most of the uh, wholesalers are probably using Podio and yeah. I'm trying to think, uh, Carlos Reyes, his it's, I forget what he calls his, his Podio phone beast or something, yeah, like, that something, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something beast, but I'm seeing everyone has their different, yeah. certain build up. Yeah. This beast is just, mode or something beast like mode. That. Yeah. This is just the build that we have is called left main. Oh, okay. Left main that. refers to your heart. And if your left main goes out, you're dead. Oh shoot. That's intense. So, so that's why yeah. the reason behind that. But, uh, <laughs> I would say left main, I'm saying just keeps everyone super accountable, which is awesome. Uh -huh. So that's the captain I'm, I'm more can becoming because I need to look in our system and always know like, Hey, this person is performing. How do we coach them up Yeah, and make them better? Or how do we get rid of, or do we just split ties? What about, so is that also called a captain on the predictive index? Yeah. It's just two types of captains, but it's called the yeah, same thing. I'm saying there's two types of everything. Cause uh, I'm saying there's also the Maverick. Yeah. So is there two types of Mavericks? There's two, there's multiple types of everything. Uh, so okay. when you do, when you do a, a predictive index, you could have, I'm trying to think. You could have someone super, super high yeah. A, which would be super independent. Yeah. Or you have someone that's maybe a little bit closer to the middle. Yes, they're independent, but they're just not as super independent as other ones. Yeah. Or they're super driving or flexible. I'm saying there's just obviously they're different things. Like yeah. for us with hiring hiring people, um, promoters, persuaders are gonna be some of our better salespeople. Yeah. For setters and closers, because I'm mm. saying that's kind of what you want. Yeah. True Mavericks, you don't want on your sales team because they usually learn the process and leave. Hundred percent. So, if you're listening to this and you want to take the predictive index because you want to know what kind of personality profile you have, uh, send us an email at Brian at Future Flipper, and we will give that test to you for free. 
so you could learn what personality you are because it's very important when you're running a business to know your strengths and weaknesses. So, all right. So Gary Harper came in 2020. You guys all took the predictive index. He put you guys in the, in the right roles. What happened after that? So that's where I went from being just the, so I guess fast track. Then I became the disposition manager. And then Ryan was so slowly starting to groom me to not necessarily take over the company, but Hey, if I was to leave for a month, could Sean Bob run the organization? Really? Yeah. Cause oh, I'm saying okay. I was running comps. I was underwriting every deal, sending him an email and he'd say, yeah. okay, here's what you did good. Here's what you did wrong. Yeah. And finally at that, that time when Gary came in, Gary's like, Hey, look, if you look at Sean Bob's per, uh, per personality trait, this is what you want as your COO. Oh. And if you look at his self-concept, he's going to get burnt out pretty soon of how you, how you handle him and why you, and you need to basically let him be more free. Uh, you need to let him just figure it out and be the captain got it. and control the situation because that's just what his naturally does. Did you feel like that? Yeah, I'm saying uh, for sure. I'm saying like Ryan was overseeing everything I did, which I get it because I'm saying he's running a million dollar company and yeah. you buy a couple of bad deals. What happens? Yeah, you lose. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying I already told you the other day that for another time, I bought two bad deals where we were just under a million dollars. So I'm saying we lost. Yeah. Can we talk about it or no? Can't talk about it yet. Ah! Can't talk about it. Are you going it. through a lawsuit or something like that? Oh, yeah, you are. Can't, okay. can't talk okay, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can't talk about it. <laughs> but then but then I heard other people lost $5.2 so now, now I sleep supposedly, well better at night. Yeah, supposedly. Not supposedly. Lost. I'll just yeah. say it straight up. She yeah. told me that. <laughs> this woman <laughs> called me crying as a, on a Saturday morning as I'm at T-ball with my kid. And I'm like, excuse me? Say that again? Yeah. Holy crap. Like, Yeah. So, all right. So you guys took the predictive index, move roles, and yeah. then you became the COO of Home Run Offer. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, then my guess is you're interested in real estate investing. Some of you are just starting out while others are trying to scale their business to the next level. But the problem is with so much information out there, most people don't know which program or coach to trust. Well, I'm a bit biased, but I believe my company, Future Flipper, can help you get to the next level. We've coached thousands of students from all over the world on how to build their real estate investing business. It doesn't matter whether you want to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Our coaching program has everything you need to become a great investor. There are many things that we include with coaching, but to give you a few examples, you're going to get an accountability coach. These are people that have had success in their own business, and they want to make sure that you achieve success in yours. We also have all of our documents, our systems, and processes that I've used to buy hundreds of homes. You can copy and paste them directly into your own business. And we have events where you get to meet me, top level guest speakers, and other students who are crushing it. My students do deals with each other, and I personally do deals with them too. In fact, at a recent event, I just honored over 20 people in our program that made over a million dollars in the last year. So if you wanna grow your real estate business, head over to futureflipper.com and apply for a call with our team. The call is completely free and they can help point you in the right direction whether you work with us or not. So go to futureflipper.com and book your call today. What and I, and were... I never, and I have no idea like how that even happened. Like, cause here's the best part. <laughs> so we had a three day event. Gary came to our office. Yeah. His wife came to our office. A guy named Brandon Barnes came to our office. And it's, I, I, I Eddie, no. I forget Eddie's last name. And this guy, Eddie, went to her office as well. Yeah, Super high producers, every, each one of these people, all right? So Friday, they're there. We're going over, like, um, things about our company. Hey, what's your vision? What do you think you're uh, – um, everyone has the same vision you, as you kind of with the company. Mm -hmm. What are your uh, core values? Kind of yeah. going over that, building out the systems. Here's here's homework and offer. Here's a C CEO position, Ryan. Who wants to be the CEO? And actually, Noel actually really wanted to be the CEO. Oh, okay. And Gary's like, hey, unfortunately, like, I'm not saying you can't do it, but your profile just doesn't, it's not the right fit for it. Got it. And that's when he told Ryan, he's like, dude, Sean Bob's your guy. You need to put him in. So that was Friday. Saturday, we had a planned C section for my wife because we were having our second kid. Oh, man. At two o'clock. So I was there from 8 a.m. till I think I left around noon. <laughs> yeah. And then I didn't talk to them because I was busy at the hospital. Yeah. So Tuesday rolls around, I come back to the office and Ryan looks at me like, hey man, like, uh, so you're the COO now. Dang. I'm like, so what does that mean? He's like, you're just a COO. We'll figure it out as it goes. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So like, is there any training for this? He's like, no, 
And no, I'm dude, saying, just do the COO. Just that's do Ryan. the COO stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, yeah. That's how Ryan is. Like, yeah. Like Ryan's never had a real job in his life. He played baseball. That's yeah. Not a, I'm saying, not saying that's a, not a real job, but yeah, that's a hobby. You're playing yeah. a hobby. Like <laughs> you're learning things in your hobby, but you're not learning how to run a run and control a, a big a business. business. Yeah. 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 That's so. true. Yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, because I I've worked with Ryan now for almost two years, so I know exactly how he is. He's like, all right, this is the vision. All right, I'm gonna go do this. Yeah, and then you have to just like figure it out, yeah. hire, fire, yeah. look for training. Um, and it's actually one thing that I do love about working with Ryan is you do get that where it's like, here, go figure it out. It's like a game. You're yeah, like, fail, right. yeah, like fail forward. Yeah, yeah. So, but the, but the other good thing about I'm saying organization mm-hmm. now that how we've kind of built it up in the last even just the last like six months yeah is i think a key factor for all the company's success is pineda company yeah because now instead of every company having another expense it's now a shared expense with every company so now yeah kind of what you're saying earlier like hey ryan's like here's the vision now you have other people to bounce your ideas exactly off of. yeah so when yeah. i first started working with ryan i didn't i felt like i didn't have anyone to talk to because i really didn't talk to you i live in california yeah I didn't talk to Matt, didn't talk to the other guys. Um, so I would just talk to Rohan. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was a lot of just like, I would call our our boy Rohan. I'd be like, dude, honestly, I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk to you about this, but I need to figure this out. What do you think? Yeah. And then go back and forth. But anyway, so, all right. So 2020 happened. Uh, how did you guys kind of navigate through COVID and keep closing a lot of deals because I think you guys had like your best years ever during yeah. 2001 and 2000. I would say we even gave a deal during COVID. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say the vision right off the start was like, hey, let's just track numbers. And I'm saying we've been tracking numbers since 2018. Yeah. So like every day, Monty gets in the office and Monty goes over the MLS and says, hey, here's all the actives, here's all the in contract, here's all the new properties in the market. And so yeah. we're always tracking. Inventory. Yeah. So I'm saying right now, if you're looking at the show, we're just under five months of inventory. Okay. Versus six months ago, we were less than a month. Got it. But anyways, with, I would say with COVID hitting, obviously office got shut down. We went strictly remote. Yeah. So everyone was at their house. The appointment guy was the only person going on appointments, wearing a mask. Stevenson doesn't really wear a mask ever. So <laughs> most sellers didn't care. I'm yeah. saying the mask is the least of their concerns, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was every day at 10 and 2 o'clock, I would do a Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. And it was like talking to my team, like, hey, here's what we got going on today. How are we hitting the leads? Okay, and our TV commercial actually just started. Yeah. So we were monetizing our TV commercial as well. And uh-huh. Ryan's like, hey, man, if all these people are home, what are they doing all day long? They're yeah. watching TV. Yeah. So we went from, I think, like our budget originally was like 15000 a month yeah. to I think we just doubled it. We went to thirty. Oh, wow. Like right away, we're like, F it. We'll just double down yeah. and people were so scared. People were bringing us deals. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd find these like turnkey properties. We were getting like 75 K under what the, what they would sell for on the MLS. Yeah. And Ryan's like, yeah, just double down. Yeah. We were, we just kept raising more capital Yeah, through like his, uh, his, his network and the other people. He's like, Hey, this person has some money. Give them a call. Yeah. Talk to them about the benefits of what we can do for them kind of thing. Yeah. And then restructuring all of our stuff instead of having, private be a hundred percent. We went strictly to, uh, every deal we bought was, we don't, we'd get around like 90 to 95% loan to value uh-huh. with a hard money lender and then gap fund the other, other five, five percent, five to 15% or whatever it was. Yeah. So you guys just blew up buying yeah. houses. Yeah. How many so houses we, we tried buy? to, how many houses during COVID? Yeah. Um, 2020. Do you know? I, I would have to look at my sheet to be honest. I'm saying we bought a, a, a ton of houses. Like more than a hundred. Uh, I wouldn't say as high as a hundred. I'd say lower than that, but everything was just a crazy spread. Oh, okay. like I'm saying, I don't know if you remember this deal. You had a deal locked up under COVID. You I were know. scared to buy it. I know you wholesaled this with no fee. Yeah. Or no, originally you wholesaled it with a fee and yeah. then COVID dropped and you're like, dude, just like take this off my hands. I know. Okay. I know. And I'm saying I kept that house for about nine months. Yeah. We had a, re- we had a lease. We had to yeah, have honor. them do it. Yeah. Then we offered them the house Yeah. and just how the market appreciated. It didn't matter. Yeah. Like you would have things fall out of contract, fall out of contract. And every time you realize the house, you get more, you realize it for like another 10,000. Yeah. It was, it was stupid. It just, yeah. I know. It didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, Alex Wentland, 
was another wholesaler. We never bought deals off him. Yeah. But everyone was scared. So we were buying the deals now. Like he had yeah. people that he was committed to, like they needed to sell. Yeah. So we jumped in, we bought their deals, we fixed and flipped it, closed them out. I think Casey Ryan sold us sold us some deals that normally we wouldn't buy just because of the spreads. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. would say 2021 was my biggest buying year. 2021. 2021. Yeah. So you guys I must have back. bought over a hundred houses in 2021. Really? Like from 20, 2021 to 2022. Ryan looked at me. He's like, dude, are you just a buying machine? He goes, how do we have all these funds? I'm like, just keep gap funding, bro. Like, yeah. I just keep calling the list and trying to raise more capital. What about like, how much revenue are you guys doing these years? This year right now? Um, not not just this year, but I'm talking about 20, 2019, so 2021, 2022. I don't have the numbers for 2019 just because I wasn't running operations yeah. then. Yeah. Um, or 2020, to be honest. I, d- mm. I just... I don't know what they are off the top of my head right now. Mm-hmm. 2021, just because I was helping with all that stuff. 2020, I was, I was helping as well. But 2021, um, we grossed like 3.7. 3.7. So home run offer is just the marketing department. Yeah. We grossed something like 2.8 or 2.9 million. It's so almost five, six million dollars. Grossed. Yeah, grossed six million dollars. That's still really good. No, 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 no. You're not. So... Homer and Offered alone did like 2.9. Yeah. And then me and Ryan just finding deals from like people like you yeah, or other 2.9. people. So this deal, we did just under a million. Oh, so, okay. so combined, we were like about 3.7. 3.7. But, we, but also from 2021 to 2022, we carried over 70 properties. Dang. Which I'm saying we're just all bangers. Yeah. Um, I think our best month ever, I think we grossed about 2 million in uh, March of 2020. Jeez. Or sorry, 2022. 2022. So you guys started yeah. off hot. Some hot, real hot. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the market's been cooling down, but in March is kind of when we really started talking about, like, hey, our risk is too high here. Like, yeah. you're like 30 million in debt right yeah, now between yeah, yeah. all these properties. You know, like, Sean Bob, like, you need to slow down. Yeah, I know. I've been there too. So now, like, from that vision, okay, at the same time, we were redoing our CRM, going from Podio to Salesforce, uh-huh. and strictly just going from a... 90 10 perspective of like hey we're only gonna wholesale 10 now versus yeah. in the future we're only gonna do there he is um the other stuff he's there, now yeah ryan's in the room he's ryan kinda, pinedo just walked in the room <laughs> we, we need 15 more mics <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole crew behind him but uh i lost my train of thought that's no, all right so anyways you you came into the year hot you're like all right we're flipping 90 percent. we're wholesaling 10 percent, and you guys decided to pretty much reverse it so 10% flipping, 90% wholesaling. Yeah. But right now I'm saying we're not even buying in flips because we're still watching the market. Yeah. Like the market is for us in Las Vegas, which I would say we're kind of like Arizona, uh, San Diego. We're we're more expensive market. So obviously yeah. we are going to be impacted. Oh, um, yeah. I think right now, right now we're about 33 flips we still own. Okay. That we're still selling off. How Ryan, many of those do you think you're losing on? We'll see. I would say we've only lost on a few so far, thank God. Oh, that's good. But yeah. we just got a luxury one off the books finally. We we still made money on it. There you go. Um, how many are we really going to realistically lose on? We'll probably lose on a bunch of them. Oh, really? It's, it's part like of the Like more business. than half or no? But I'm saying, no, not more no, than half Okay, that's good. Yeah. I would say probably the last like maybe 15 we bought will be pretty close. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not but bad. But I'm saying like- the, the Out other, of all like, the wins, you take the losses. Yeah. Yeah. But also you got to figure- all the other bottlenecks we had were, I'm saying this last year with bottlenecks that every flipper had was what? Contractors. Yeah. And supplies. Yeah. So I'm saying we went through it. Everyone else went through it. It just, it just sucks. Yeah. I think everyone's been struggling through it. You know, it is what it is. Like, you know, if, if you didn't know the market shifted, but the good, thing, <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, you know, less competition, the yeah. tough will survive and the people who are left, in the market when it decides to go back up are going to uh, cash it. out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause I know a lot of people who've quit. They, they went and start other businesses. They're freaking about to file bankruptcy or whatever it is. So for me, yeah. even for my business, I'm like, all right, just tread water, you know, close the safe deals, wholesale the safe deals, you know, buy the rentals, just tread water until we see the light at the end of the tunnel. I, for me, my prediction is right now we don't see it. Nobody knows mm-hmm. because they keep playing with the interest rates and raising them. 
But um, I heard Patrick Bet David say that he believes in 2024 that we're going to see a pop of growth. And um, when Grant Cardone was here yesterday or the day before, he also said the same thing that he thinks that, you know, they're going to pull everything down. And then when they release, we're going to see a flood of buyers, which makes sense because a lot of people are just waiting for the interest yeah. rates to go down. So if you're in the game, you're going to take advantage of that. If you're just sitting in the sidelines, you know, in your mama's house and you're in, in your underwear doing nothing in the basement, uh, in the basement, <laughs> doing absolutely nothing. You know, yeah. you're going to miss another boom cycle. Yeah. That's what I think. I would say the, the other thing, like kind of going back to talking about like with like marketing and stuff like that, the other crazy thing about our market Mm -hmm. is obviously it's it's been dying yeah but <laughs> us being like one of the only like real tv people yeah like two of our competitors got on a tv over the last year because like they're like they were asking me like when i like, see i'm like hey how's tv i'm like dude 5x return yeah like it's crazy uh-huh like the projected profits we had from 2021 to 22 was just crazy yeah like, we like i'm saying like one of our recent closes we bought this year we bought a mobile home and it was out of the property because the house is burnt down. And we're like, okay, we'll buy this mobile. We're going to be all in 130000 or 170000 all in. Yeah. Um, we're going to probably relist it for about two forty. It'll dollars It'll sell. Yeah. Three, like two months. Yeah. Third day on the market, our agent said, let's list it for three fifty. Yeah. Got an offer at three twenty five. dollars Dang. And I'm saying we're... And even with the downturn of this market, we're still going to make 100K on this deal. So you guys are still having six-figure months, even in a oh, slow yeah. market. Easy. Yeah. So yeah. listen to that, guys. Even yeah. though the market is down, Sean, Bob, and Ryan are still having six-figure months. It's not as easy as it used to be, yeah. but it's still possible. So don't take your bags and go home. Figure it out. Um, so I guess talk to me really quick about running what does it take to run a multi-million dollar real estate company um i would say it's it's it kind of reminds me a little bit of parenting i'm i'm, I'm saying honestly yeah. like yeah. i have two kids you have you have kids as yeah. well like it's you're always making sure that everyone is succeeding okay and i'm saying one of my mentors i talked to about this he's like dude that's not the best approach but it works for you yeah because i'm saying i'm always like Seeing how the disposition side is, hey, we need to work on buyers. Yeah. Yes, I understand that you know that I'm telling you this. Every but day. this is what we need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our salespeople, hey, this is how we talk to people. Like I'm always like implementing, helping people, but I'm also delegating as well. Like I'm not going to do everything, all the day to day business more. Like my TC helps me out a lot. Yeah. And I'm very fortunate. Like my TC has taken a lot of stuff off my plate, which makes me have more time to always help my team. Yeah. Um. So I'm saying I'm always helping with trying to hire like i'm saying i have other people i delegated to hire but i'm still hands hands on it because i'm saying i need this done yeah i'm a, I'm a guy i'm saying you're probably the same thing when i need something i like to get done that day yeah exactly like I i'm saying wait. i annoy people and i follow up and i'm saying that's it is what it is yeah but i need that to succeed yeah i guess what is the biggest struggle with working at, in a multi multi-million dollar business um i'd say honestly probably like the last like six months is just talent Oh, okay. Yeah. Even yeah. though like we have Ryan's social media that we were able to basically blast out to yeah. millions of people. Yeah. Some of those people are just scared to apply. Like if you have talent and you want to work for a multi-million dollar company, like reach out to me. Yeah. Sean S A N at homeroffer.com. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys but, looking uh, for salespeople or what are you looking for? Yeah, always salespeople. Yeah. yeah. Salespeople are like almost like yeah. the blood of any business because yeah. yeah, I'm saying uh, I we run an organization where we have motivated sellers. Yeah. Like most of these, like I'm not gonna say just the ghetto wholesalers. Yeah. When you're cold calling and tech blasting, you're gonna get sued. Those yeah. people are gonna come after you. Like yeah. I was gonna tell your students with this when you guys are cold calling your list, like there's usually four columns of phone numbers. Yeah. Column one and two are the best. Column three and four are what other people are are buying. They're buying those phone numbers yeah. to then sue people. Yeah. Because they're on the do not call list. They it's a game for them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't call the do not call list. Like we like we paid out twenty twenty one, I think almost a hundred thousand dollars between lawyer fees and and this lead we called. Yeah. Even though in our system and our our recordings, which hypothetically yeah. they're not supposed Supposedly. to know about. Yeah. But uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm saying like they they knew what they were doing. Hey, yeah, I want to sell my house. This yeah. and the other. I, I guess we'd like that too. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Okay, so I guess wrapping it up, 
what do you think is it going to take to continue to crush and eventually double and get to that six to eight million dollar mark? So kind of what we're doing with our mentor right now that's helping us with our CRM and our sales stuff like that, his whole approach to wholesaling is what they do in Arizona. Yeah. So they do like a money ball approach, if you remember that movie. Yeah. No, so I've never the, seen it. So think about this. If I want to make... $8 million. All right. Let's just do it monthly. If I want to make... Say, for instance, I want to make... A million dollars. Half a million dollars in a month. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. How many contracts do I need to make a half a million dollars? Depending on the market okay. in California, at least 10. We'll just say if every contract I wholesale is $25,000... It's 20. Okay. Yeah. I need I need 20 contracts a month. Yeah. And if the dropout rate, how many contracts do I need? We'll, we're not going to go yeah, that yeah. deep. Yeah, We'll say 25. Okay. We need 25. So yeah. if I need 25 contracts a month, mm -hmm. I need to have a minimum of 100 appointments a month. Yeah. So it's 25 a week. Yep. And usually with sales guys, you only want to give an appointment guy about 10 to 15 appointments a week or they're going to get burnt out. Mm. So like three salespeople. Yeah. Kinda. So three yeah. salespeople. Yeah. And about 30% of my leads will get an appointment set for them. Okay. So then, so that's, we need to get X amount of leads in our system. Yeah. Okay. So you so just kind of reverse it engineer it. So like our right now, our goal right now is I have five inside salespeople, leads managers or ISAs in house inside sales agents. Yeah. And I have one acquisition, which is my appointment guy. Yeah. We just hired another one, Rudy, which yeah. I'm excited for you, my man. Mm -hmm. Also a student of Pace Morby, so he's going to teach us a lot of stuff. <laughs> We're going to collab on everything, which is awesome. <laughs> no, you cannot have him on phone calls, but yeah. maybe I'll pimp him out. <laughs> um, and then we and then we hired another guy who actually worked for us, uh -huh. and I brought him back. I'm like, dude, we just were in the wrong timing. But anyways, the whole goal is I'm trying to get one salesperson that goes on appointments to every two leads managers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just still building my team up. Got it. I'm hoping by the end of 2023, yeah. To hopefully have about five appointment guys and and to have 10 leads managers in office. Because that's good. So when it, that's, I'm seeing, honestly, that's what's going to bring us to the $10 million or $10 million uh, dollar amount for the year. Is that what you guys are aiming for? That's where our goal is. 2023. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you guys could do it. You guys have been freaking kicking butt and doing everything since 2018 as a group. So, yeah. Thank you for coming on. Again, if if you want to reach out to Sean Bob because you want to work for HRO, Home Run Offer, it's Sean Bob at Home Run Offer. Nope. Sean. Sean. Sean, S-E-A-N, like Sean Connery, uh -huh. at homerunoffer.com. Perfect. All right, guys. My name's Brian Davila. That's Sean Bob. Austin is recording us. Thank you so much for listening to the Future Flipper podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.